Okay, let's see. We got to put something here. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Let me see if I can put my screen on here. Where's my uh, Photoshop? Window. Share. How's that? Okay. It looks pretty good. I'm gonna design a cover today for Sean and his. Uh, let, me, let me make this fit a little better. I found there's certain things with StreamYard they gotta kind of finesse it a little bit. <clears throat> Looks good. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, so Sean has this uh, this uh, comic cover, and uh, for Ben Franklin's "Silence Do Good." I don't know why that keeps popping up. Want that? Not interested in that. So I've got a cover design working already. If I can find it here. <clears throat> Let's see. Photoshop. Use the GIL. Now here's the first design. This is what I sent Sean originally, and it's a pretty good cover. It's a decent solution. I like it. Um, but I think we're going to try, Sean wants to try one with the figures centered more. And that's a good idea. These figures are still kind of off to the side, the monsters in the middle, which is fine, but we're going to try one a little more figure central. And I started some, um, some sketches here. So I got these guys. Instead of um, doing a um, let's see, I'm gonna, which one did I like out of these female figures? Now this is pretty much okay. These are the robots in the background. Robots in the background there. Okay. That's my layout. I'm going to have robot hands coming here, sort of in the foreground. It makes them look, you know, it looks pretty threatening, pretty scary. I've got um, several images for the grail the goyle let's see bring this fully up 100 percent okay so i'm not thrilled necessarily with her pose it i, I think i think I, this one's probably the best right here wait a minute got this one doesn't look excited enough doesn't look scared enough doesn't look intense enough this one still not that intense this one yeah this one's better, but it needs work. I don't know what it needs, but it needs work. So there's Ben on this side and then Nash on this side. Nash is like a kind of a cowboy. Um, he's uh, kind of Clint Eastwood type character. Let's see. Looks what we got here. Oh, we got some guys here. Cool. Hi, guys, everybody. Bassmaster. Oh, an Andy raid. Cool. <laughs> That's cool. Um, Paulus is here. Uh, Omni. 
and uh, so let's go. We're gonna do. Have you guys seen this cover or this uh, heard of this comic book? Uh, he calls himself Salty. Uh, online, anyways. His name's Sean Salter, and uh, but he goes by Salty. Is his screen name? So go check his out. His channel. He's got a great channel. There's only a few videos up. But they're a lot of fun. Uh, he's got this guy, this um, teammate named Savage, and it's really fun. Fun, good. These guys are gonna be have a good show. I can tell already. Right, off to a really good start. So let's see. Omni's new. Okay, cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. So you can really screw, saw me, watch me screw up, Omni. For the <laughs> You come to the right place if you want to see how to make some mistakes in drawing. No, I'm going to try not to screw it up. But the girl needs work. The girl, the girl needs work. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to actually bring the, the opacity down on both of these guys big time here so I can focus just on the girl. Let's see, 428. What time is it? I don't want to cut into Aaron's show, but. Um, but I haven't done a live stream in a while, and uh, it's time for me to do one. Okay. Now this girl is a kind of a ninja type. His name's Maddie, and uh, gotta kind of make her hot. That's the that's the uh, the plan here. So. Now, I can see here the pose that I got. I think it's too, it's excited, she's dramatic, but she's not intense. And I think I'm gonna try, I'm gonna go back to the original layout here. Hang on a second. I think what it needs is a little bit more intensity in the look, like he's going to be looking this side. I need a bigger brush. Where is it? By the way, I, anybody who knows me, I, I don't use anything fancy with brushes. It's just soft brush, hard brush. That's it. That's all you need. Okay, so I want to get her this movement in her figure. Something strong, something powerful. But it's a little bit too much, like, oh, helpless me. And I don't want that. I want, uh, like, she's in ready for action so that generally means legs you know if it's spread farther apart for stability arms go back a little bit farther to increase this the strain the, the stress on the you know the on the uh you know, the, your your energy of your figure comes in your the twists and the turns and the and the torque and the power. You know, that's where you, you want to uh, to push that figure to the limits somewhat. Okay. Now, I think the weakness in this pose is actually comes from, and I've said this before, my you know my dynamic drawing stuff is the neck or the, the, where you put the head. So, I think your face, her head, is weak. The way it's looking up like this. I think I need a cooler face, like looking down like this, a little more badass. A little more of the chin into the... You know, twisting, see that now the, the, the one way, the, the torso is twisting this way, and then her head's gonna be twisting that way. Again, that's that's energy, that's torque in a figure. Very, very important. Oh, is my camera stable here? Let's look at the bounce in a little bit. All right. Let's see if I'm getting any responses. Oh, Corey. Hey, Corey. How are you? Hey, everybody. Yeah, spread them legs. <laughs> Great. This is Comic Skate. This is the way it goes. This is the way we... <laughs> There's no, nothing is safe. Nothing is sacred. Uh <clears throat> Which is why it's so much fun. Okay, boobs last. All right. 
Now maybe she, her head needs to be a little bit more. Now see, here's an interesting thing. Watch as the things change, you know, the tilting things, turning things. You get a, a different feel, a different look. I want it to, to be a little more just, you know, I'm gonna use my arrow keys here actually because I want more precision. Just, I want that that head to be pushing in on the back of the neck more as much as possible. Again, for torque. For the twisting of the muscles. It's funny, I, I could actually, uh, there's two ways I can do this. I can do this a linear way approach, or I can do, I could actually do like a painterly approach. I can actually go to paint. I'll have to do that one of these days, just to go to, go to, you know, full sketch to paint instead of doing a line, any line, comic line work, because that's interesting. And actually, sometimes it's more powerful because you're using mass and, and shape and stuff like that. By the way, when you're doing the figures, uh, use a thick brush, thicker brush, or well, it, 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 whatever works. But thick brushes. The good thing about thick brush is it forces you to ignore details, and that's why I, I also recommend when you're drawing these figures out, draw them small. Again, it forces you to ignore details. Man, this is what this is what Photoshop is great for: doing layouts and design. All right, get that knee in there. Sometimes I have trouble with knees. That's what's great about having these two robot things. <laughs> I'll just cover it up. Let's see. Um, Corey, I got to get together with you guys, you and, and Clayton, do some drawing tutorials and stuff. That'd be fun. You guys got all that new stuff. I I don't know anything about it. And I'm old school. I got the old traditional styles, which I think you can learn something from. And together, I think it would be very interesting drawing uh, instructors. Your stuff looks great, by the way, Corey. It's, it's kicking ass lately. So, you see, guys, how I work a figure. It's like I just, it's back and forth. It's molding. It's like I'm working with clay. You know, just you just shape and mold it continuously until you get to where you want it to be. And you, it's a series of like almost like making mistakes. And then fixing those mistakes and then refining those mistakes. Like shooting at a target and oh, I missed, you know, then the next shot is closer and next shot a little closer until you get it spot on. Putting them in your sights and getting it. Now I got to look at this figure here off screen here. What is her? She's got goggles. I think I'll put a little bit of that. She doesn't have too much costume I got to worry about. Goggles, um, metal arm on the left side, that's this side, and metal wrist blade, wrist, metal wrist thing on this side. Uh, the, 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 uh, hang on a second, I gotta take a look at this. <clears throat> boots, I can't really see the boots too well in this shot. But it looks like they're not really um, big buckles or anything. More kind of ninja-esque. Okay. I'll pin that reference down later more. I'm looking at, you guys can't see what I'm looking at here, but I'm, I'm looking at the reference. Okay. Okay, has anybody seen... Uh, Salty's uh, YouTube show. It's a lot of fun. Sean, uh, uh, Salty and Savage, as they call themselves. 
Very funny. Hey, there's Frog Tony. <laughs> boobs. <laughs> Frog Tony's first thing to say is, is boobs. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> okay. She looks good. I feel like she's not as energetic as I want, though. I don't know what's, why she's want more power. She needs more va va voom. I mean, it's not bad, but I don't want just never, never just be satisfied with okay or good enough. So let me see what I can play, what I can do with this figure to kind of punch it up. I don't know. Actually, I think this might be pretty good. Actually, I'm going to duplicate the layer, Command J. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to try some things with this character, this figure. Just see what happens if I move the upper parts around does that does that help to give her a little more twist there it's kind of cool see twisting this way to you know you twist you know you can do different kinds of twists in that that's not as powerful nor is is sexy you want uh, you know the, the the curvature of the woman when you want to trying to sell hotness kind of see that's got a little bit of feel to it i kind of dig it then watch if i put it down here that's too squat okay all right that's pretty good that's pretty good i want to look at these two and see which one I like better. This one, this one. I don't know, one's got, uh, it's hard to say. One's got, uh, see, I think it's, it's, she's standing up too much. I think that, you know, that actually is not as powerful. I think it's leaning over a little bit better. <clears throat> I think what I'm gonna do I'm going to try this, create and do, duplicate this layer again. I'm going to, wait, that's not the one, this one. I'm going to try just taking this figure and moving it. Using my arrow keys here. Wait a minute. Select it. I'm in the wrong layer. That's why, duh. Okay. She's just got a little bit that. I think that it just needed a little bit more. I don't know. You can see how, you guys, how I obsess over this stuff, trying to get it just right. Get the feel, get the motion, push it, keep it realistic. It's dynamic realism. But if you want to get a good a good figure, you want to get it, this thing really working good. You got to. You can't just take anything that pops out. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I may try it out. I usually do several refinement layers, anyways. I'm not sure. Let's see what you guys are talking about. I mean, am I doing a cover, Danny? I, I am uh, doing a cover. This is uh, for um, Sean Salter. It's he has a comic book called Ben Franklin's Silence Do Good Time Travel Agent, and it, it's a lot of fun. They, these guys steal. Uh, they go back in time, steal Ben Franklin, and they bring him into an AI world. And but he's a smart cookie, and he does not. He's suspicious that something's going on, and, and he's not having it. And so, the, but there's some resistance to it's, it's. It's an exciting story. Lots of stuff going on. Lots of interesting things going on. Uh, you know, Sean is a, uh, a thoughtful writer as well as a an entertaining writer. Hey, Chris, how are you? Good to see you here. All right, let's see. Back to the figure.
Okay. I don't draw these uh, anorexic women, you know, by the way. I draw hot, well, volu voluptuous women. That's a good word, voluptuous. The Frazetta. You know, fat bottom girls, they make the rock and roll go around. Yep, there you go. And the comic book world go around. Oh my God, I better not sing. Okay. All right, I actually like this figure pretty much. Let me see. Let me look at the original. Gosh darn it, not much difference, is there? I think I kind of... Maybe it was the butt sticking out too much. It looks so stupid. Maybe this is just the best one. Sometimes your first try is the best. Okay, so I'm gonna take this opacity way, way down, way down, about as far as I can, and that's and still see it. Now I'm gonna go work out the the details. This is where your just your knowledge of studying the figure comes in construction of the face. I've got a lot of con the construction there is there already though for me. Wait, I want even a little bit bigger brush. Sometimes I do three passes with the, uh, with my, actually what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to print it out and draw it in pencil. So it doesn't even have to be really, you know, pretty line work or nothing with this stuff here. Okay, the eyes in this one are going to be pretty important. I'm going to try to draw a little bit more of a downward look on the head. So I don't know what I want with the mouth. Intensity, not intense. I think I'm going to, going to go almost in between for the moment. But the eyes here are really, really important because I want I want a look that's like, you know, kick ass. That means if, if I'm looking down, remember when you're doing an eye, especially looking down, you got your eye eyeball here. So if you're looking from this angle, this is going to be more straight. You know, if you're looking from from this angle. You know, you're gonna this top part's gonna be appear round. So we're looking from this angle here, and so this is much more much straighter, and the the roundness. So I'm looking for saying this this is gonna be appear round. You know, so I'm really interested in that and this white space, the negative space here is so critical. eyelid it's a little squished up here so you won't see as much of it I mean the, the yeah that's the eyelid yeah okay you want her to be intense but not necessarily mad you know when you're drawing girls in comics these are for guys and guys don't really like to see their girls p really pissed I don't think that's attractive <laughs> But it's actually the same thing. With, actually, in a way, with guys too, it, it, you want to have them intense, but not, you know, in, in intensity, but but not necessarily anger. You remember the Bruce Lee movie? Uh, emotional content, not anger. Okay, noses. I think she's a pretty youngish kind of girl. So small noses. I'm drawing the construction of those, but when I finish this, I mean, I'll tell you what, I don't, I'm not gonna have a lot of this line work in the nose. I'm gonna push it back. Because especially if a, well, I gotta make this thing a little softer here. Especially with, with noses, keep it, 
keep this the lines around the nose nice and soft easy this space a little longer remember when you're looking at a face from the side you've got you know, like this so when you're looking at it from this direction you see a lot of it you know the distance here if you're looking at it from another angle, you know, you, it just, it gets, if, let's say you're looking at it from an up, upwards angle like this, this, this space is going to be sh much shorter. So we're, we're, we want this to be, you know, somewhat longer. So think, you got to think about the, and use that little model, use those models, boy, that really helps. Okay. So. Let's see if I have any questions, any questions? Emotional damage. <laughs> All right. Yes. That's even better. <laughs> Let me see what other questions. Anything else here? Make them nice and thick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. John Mayen. <laughs> now, the cleavage could be bigger. Maybe give her more shape overall. Maybe. Well, she's actually, she's a very small uh, uh, Roy, he's, he's a very small character. She's not a large woman. Uh, so I, I do have to keep things rather small ish. She's kind of ninja small. That's the character. Oh, okay. Sylvia's giving us good advice. Oh, there's Jimmy. <laughs> hey Jimmy, how's it going, man? You know, Jimmy, if you want to come in here, you, I'll let you come in here. Uh, if you, I, I, I appreciate it if you want to come in here, actually. But I'm not sure how to do that. I'm still novice at this. But if you're interested, I may try it. Let's see. Okay, the jaw. Again, another thing is, you know, that you're, we're looking at from the angle, looking down a little bit. So this... The distance here is smaller than it usually is. Okay. Yeah, Jimmy's got his dragon range. Check that out, guys. Looking good. Got some David Finch covers. That's cool. Okay, let me see how this face is looking on the head. Sometimes I draw heads too big when I'm getting close. Eh, it doesn't look that good. Well, I mean, it, it, just it's way off as far as proportions. You know, this is what's so great about photo, Photoshop. You can really fix this shit. Okay. Move that over a little bit. This eye looks too large. Large and too large in the other one, so we'll bring that in a little bit. Use my arrow keys and it fix that. Okay. Okay, my arrow keys. Okay, that looks better. That's what's so great in my Photoshop. Oh my gosh, it would take me so long. I did, did you know it's in pencil, just a pain in the ass. Let me see what's going on here. Um, all right, Chris is here. Hey, Chris. Salty's here. Salty, do you want to come in? We can discuss this as I work on it. Because she may be yelling at me. That's not the character, Dan. Okay, let's see. Let me see. Oh, you damn, damn me back. Okay, I got. Let me see if I can get him in here. Oh, I need to add headphones too. Shoot. Okay. Let's see. Um, where's my streamyard? I've never actually add, added anybody yet, you guys. So this is the first time I'm gonna try. First guest on my show is Sean. Salter, let's see, invite, copy that, 
then I send it to Sean. Hang on a second, Sean. I'm going to send it to uh, Twitter here. Okay. Let's see, let's see if this works. Okay. All right. I'm I'm looking. I don't know when uh, where you'll show up. I never you know, this I never had a guess before, so Okay, invite, I did that. So you, you should show up on here, I would imagine. If not, forgive me because I don't know what the hell I'm doing yet. But I will figure it out very soon. Let me keep this a little bit smaller just for the moment because I want to see if I can see Sean come in. Let's see. History, you can move that out of the way. Okay, Sean, the uh, th the link was sent, and uh, so I don't I don't know where you're supposed to pop in at. For me on this, but probably should have figured it out before we <laughs> the live stream. I'll get back to drawing. Okay, let's see. Okay. You may have noticed I she doesn't have any hair. Uh, it's because she's Viger from Star Trek. No, she's uh, yeah. I always draw the head without the hair first, and then and you can easy then to add hair. But she she's she's got a um. I got to get this other shit here. Hang on. She's got a, um, oh, there we go. <laughs> All right. Sean is here now. Let me give it a shot. All right. Can, oh, I can't hear you. What's going on with my, uh, have I got the right thing in here? Dang it. Have I got my sound on? Sound's on, but I cannot hear you, Sean. Or it's very, very quiet. Hmm. Darn it. Wait. About now. Can you oh, now. Me? Now I hear you. Was that you or was that me? That was me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Sean. Both technically <laughs> in, uh, challenged. Really make me look stupid. Oh, that's easy to do, though. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter challenge. <laughs> no, I know. When it comes to technical stuff, I'm really good. And then when I don't know what I'm doing, I'm really bad. Well, it's either you know it or you don't. Tech stuff is either you know it or you don't know it. It's not. It's nothing, you know, intellectual about it. It's just like, oh, got to push that button. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like so. Sure. What? Okay, got it. Yeah, that's easy enough. It's like Photoshop. I'm good. Streamyard. Not so much. It's easy though. You know, I I, I just figured it out. So yeah, I can do it. <laughs> Anybody can do it. You know. <laughs> okay. So you, what do you think? So I, we had. Let's go back and review a little bit. Had the original, wait a minute, that's not that. Wait, let me put these all in one layer. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put these all in one uh, group here. Okay, that's the original, which I thought was pretty cool. I did too. I but really here's the thing is, is and, I, and I totally get it, is, the, is you know, it's not really a money shot for some of these characters. We probably want to see more of him, probably. Well, it you know, becomes Nash, about the robots, you know, right? It becomes about the robots. Like, this yes. is such a good splash page. This is a great splash Yeah, 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 exactly. It's, it's got all the actions fun. Now, as, as you were saying, we were discussing, we, we, we love uh, something happening on the cover. Because that's what, especially on the, on the first issue, you could have just a, the figure, you're introducing the character, that's pretty common. But in the, the, the subsequent issues, you really want to tell that we got more than just a, a new character. We have a story yeah. that's go ongoing and... You know, that's what I think I, I, I love, and I think you do too, yeah. 
Yeah. And so we're trying to do that. And I think that um, we can do both in this uh, in this particular, you know, new the new layout, you know. So yeah. that's fine. It's fun. It's good. She's kind of a, you know, I was thinking I'm trying to, whoops, I was trying to keep him the star of the show. And I probably could have actually done that too more with, with the color and stuff. It would have been all right. But, you know, let's let's see what happens. You know, we, we, as you were suggesting, you sent me your your layout, which was this in essence. Now, if you notice, the only things I did change on it was the the claws being out here because if you they call it the Kirby hole when you when you have mm -hmm. the um, uh, you know the the things in the foreground the, the like the heads bowed down below like like they're standing in a hole. It's not actually correct perspective. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, and also this. I feel like this is with hands here is more ominous. You know, they're in a hole. They're 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 kind of like threatened and it's dangerous. You know. No, I like it. I like it. So. Yeah, and it's, she, it's still got it's got all the action of the previous one, but now it's like we get to see the characters facing us. Yep. And it's like now it feels like a cover. Now yeah. It feels yeah. Like a cover. Yeah. Art Roy, how's my audio now? I cranked it all the way up. So if anything you sound else, great. okay. To me, anyway, then sometimes it's not the. I don't know. I feel like sometimes the uh, guys on on screen don't. It doesn't always translate like the same audio quality, yeah. you know. Sometimes I just need to project into the microphone. Yeah, there you go. It sounds a little gay, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds incredibly gay. But we're not uh, totally homophobic, are we? Not that there's anything <laughs> wrong with it. Exactly. <laughs> It's kind of we're not homophobic. We're just a little queasy about it, or something. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> like I most mean, guys. Most I think most guys, you know, if they're honest, they would say, you know, I don't really feel comfortable around that stuff at all. So I don't care as long as you're not gonna like onto me. And working in Hollywood for a long time, working at Disney and stuff, uh, try being an 18 year old virgin at Disney with all the gay guys around oh my gosh it was oh sexual God. harassment city and you couldn't do anything about it because you were white straight male and christian yeah yeah, yeah. and that makes you a bigger target because yep. now you're like now they know what's going to get to you oh yeah and they're like so. oh you're a virgin and you listen to morrissey oh you're just in the closet yeah yeah no like, Mo oh. i don't think i don't think morrissey yeah. is gay is he oh he's super gay dude is he really yeah I, I, I always thought he was, but then I then I thought I found out he wasn't. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. But I, but I'm just saying I, I I thought that he in fact no was he's not. he's totally gay. But I didn't, okay. I didn't I knew he was gay then. I didn't care. I liked the music. It wasn't about anything exactly. other than you know the music. Yeah. So, Which is the, the biggest lie about conservative people and that sort of thing is that we're we're you know we don't we're not we're not accepting or loving it. absolutely bullshit. You know, I you know I, I there's you know gay people that i know and stuff that and, and you know they're they're important to me their welfare is my concern you know it's yeah and i may not always love the the choices of the lifestyle but the uh um they don't you know, they're, understand they're, the they're whole important concept to me, you know? they don't understand the whole concept of loving the sinner not not loving the sin right you know, it's right. like look you know i could have a sibling tomorrow that goes out and decides to murder somebody i'm not gonna love what they do or accept what they did but i'm gonna love them and, right you know absolutely and yeah i said it hold me against it i don't care yeah well you know i think is i think some of this stuff was was long and coming we, we had the you know the the gay people were at one point really treated horribly kicked out of their families yes. you yep. know fired from their jobs that stuff was cruelty. Cruelty is unacceptable. They were canceled. They were canceled. They yeah, were canceled because canceling people and trying to alienate them and isolate them and ruin them for simply, you know, being a little bit different is kind of crappy. Yeah, I would. Right, agree. right, and yeah. and so you have to, you know, uh, to to you know be loving everybody, kind and everybody. You know, that's that's the thing. Now her face, she's a younger one, isn't she? Kind of person, younger person. Yeah. So she is a. She's in her probably her early twenties. She's what I in the in the book is going to be called an enhanced. Uh, enhanced are humans that have a lot of robotics. So she's got like a robotic arm. Okay. I'm, not, I'm right now. I'm concerned about her her uh, facial features. Yeah. And what what age she is and how and she's what. young. They're all a bit young. This is about this is like the Breakfast Club meets X Men. Okay. Even the, even Nash. Nash is a little bit older than her, but not much. He's still a young guy. It's like the it's like the Judd. What's the what's the guy Judd? Uh, Judd Nelson 
from the from the uh, Breakfast Club. So the, he's the badass. Yeah, Nash is the uh, the embodiment of America dripping with toxic masculinity. Okay, that sounds good to me. That's me too. You know, I'm dripping with toxic masculinity. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I don't feel very tough sometimes, uh, especially as I get older. I'm like, oh. I, you wake up with your body aching, yeah, and you're like, I didn't even do anything yesterday. I know. It's like, what's, I, I don't feel that mask, I feel pretty wimpy. You know what? You're getting old when you wake up. You didn't do anything the day before. You wake up, and your arm's all sore, and you're like, I slept on it wrong? That's really why I feel this way? I know. I know. Oi. Okay, so you, let me just look at the chat for a second because I we I want to make sure I do that. It's my job to now do that since I'm host. Uh, actually, you could help me out with. Uh, I could. If, One if interesting question from Chris Maycock is: Drawing with a mouse or stylus, Dan? I'm drawing with a Wacom tablet, and the interesting thing is, I I grew up. I, I started my whole thing with um, with a. Uh, well, I, I got a Cintiq, so I'm saying I started with a Wacom tablet, had tablet, used that for years, and I got used to looking at the the screen and drawing with with you know my, on, with the tablet on the, my hand on the tablet, looking up. In other words, not looking at my drawing. Now I have a Cintiq screen, and the reality is I still like to draw that way. So what I do is I mirror the screens, and so my when, when Cintiq is actually being used as a tablet. I'm looking at the, my computer, uh, my my uh, monitor, and drawing on my tablet like like I would just uh, if it wasn't a screened. But what I like about this antique now, let's say I've got to get in here and um, I've got to draw something. Maybe I'm maybe I'm doing um, uh, flats or something, and I really want to get in here and, and you know get something. It's easier for me to do it that way than it is on screen somewhat. It's, so I kind of use both. But for drawing, I actually like it. The funniest thing is when I'm drawing regular or something, uh, or trying to, to draw on the Cintiq, uh, looking down at it, I, it's like my hands in the way. Like, what's this thing? I can't see the drawing. What's that? In, oh, it's my hand. It, <laughs> it's so weird, you know? So, yeah, I, uh, so that's what I'm, I'm using. You, so in other words, you're, if you're, because the, the Wacom tablets are much cheaper. Yeah, they That's are. really all you need. Really all you need. You can get by with a, with a tablet. I will say, as someone who has been using a Cintiq for the last <clears throat> decade, I love the Cintiq. I really, really do. If you can afford it, if you can invest in yourself, uh, get the Cintiq. But uh, as someone who did a lot of illustrating on the Wacom tablet back in the day when I worked at Disney and stuff, because they were always too cheap to get us good equipment, um, a Wacom, ta a Wacom, ta Wacom, 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 Wacom. You, you know, I work it's, really it's well. It's actually it's Wacom, but I really can't stand saying. That. I know. It's like, hey, I'm gonna go in my room and use my Wacom. <laughs> like what? Use my Wacom. <laughs> what are you talking about? Don't don't tell everybody that. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, now she's also a little more slightly built. See, I, I got a little bit beefy here. I got a. I gotta watch that, right? You, she's more of ninja kind of. She's more, yeah. She's more. Um, she's sexy, man, and she's got a her. She like people. Are, so one person was all like, "Oh, he made a girl boss. You know, she better have superpowers." And I'm like, "Well, she is a robot, um, but she's a sexy. Well, she's half. She's like a what is it? A cyborg? cyborg. She's a cyborg essentially, um, and she's sexy and she's she's very svelte, but she's lean." Yeah. Yeah. So the, the when, when that when that you want to keep this this rib cage small. That's that makes the person you know slighter. Yeah. She's definitely not Yaira. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's not a Gaira. She's not Gaira. Amazon. Yeah. No. She's uh. She's hot ninja chick. L what's the word? Lithe or something like that? Lither. What's that, that word? That sort of describes it. A tiger like you know, physique. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I should know. Art of Roy says, yeah. I tried drawing on a small Wacom and now for a few seconds in my hand started spasming at the end of that. Seeing a nerve in my wrist was on the Wacom edge. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um did you have a small one or did you have a large one? I, I would I would see that happening on a small one, not yeah. a large one. But yeah, that would be that would 
that would be awkward. Yeah, and the prices have come down for the um, for them on the bigger ones. I think and just all the the regular, you know, the old old style ones. The yeah. prices have come way down. It's and you really... can definitely find them used too. Like people, and they last forever. The customer service is really really great. Okay, she's got. What, what do we want? Do we want swords? Or do we want uh, guns? Um, dealer's choice, man. Uh, dealer's choice, either one, because she she uses both. Okay, swords could be cool just because the 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 way she's her angles here, you know. They're kind of are they laser sword? They're laser swords or something, right? So to speak. They're like, uh, not quite laser swords. They're they're um, using a, a a type of electrified uh, metal that conducts energy. Okay. If that makes sense. Do they sense. have illumina illumination to them? Kind they of thing, they do slightly glow. They do slightly glow. They harmonize with the energy coming from her. Okay. There'll be an issue where a lot of certain things get explained. Just not an issue one, because I just ran out of time on pages, guys. Okay. Do I you... won't be like Eric July. Things will be explained. Do you want to talk a little bit about the uh, the character? Oh, with, with her? I, I did a little bit. I, I tried to tell people a little bit about it. You know, it, they go back in time and take Ben Franklin, but... Ben, ben Franklin is a, is a smart cookie, and he's not buying all this AI yeah. stuff they're trying to... to so, just, Ben Franklin gets kidnapped by a giant corporation that is kind of like a combination of Amazon and uh, Meta, and they have created... This co corporation and the CEO have developed a artificial intelligence, and that artificial intelligence uh, has uh, is in charge of a VR program where the company is called Imperium is trying to basically get everybody into that computer program to live inside of it, especially uh, uh, the poor people. They want all the poor people to live in there. Basically anyone that doesn't necessarily have marketable skills anymore because everything's been automated. And part the AI has decided that one of the things that he wants, he's figured out is how to travel through time. And so what they're doing is they're traveling through time and kidnapping people out of the time you know, are, are back in time to download their intellect into the algorithm so that they can add their intellect to his intellect and then create like a super intellect. Uh, and then as doing this, the AI decides that it's God and is going to then create plans to like kind of take over the world. And Ben Franklin gets caught up in this whole thing and he's horrified by it because he sees it as an infringement on individual liberty and the free will of man. And so, um, but this team of the girl and yeah, that, the guy. That reminds me, that reminds me of, do you ever hear the, know the story, the last question by, I think it's Isaac Asimov. It's a great, great story. Very short, short story. Um, I, he did a several. I read, um, what was it? Foundation, the Foundation series when I was in high school. Yeah, you could just you look up this one, uh, go on, on uh, YouTube and, and look up you know the last question. And, uh, and it's a fascinating, fascinating story because it, it's, it kind of delves in a little bit to what you're talking about, where the computer just becomes so knowledgeable, so incredible that it eventually becomes God. It's, yeah. Because it, it acquires all the knowledge of the universe. Yeah. So the AI in this is calls himself uh, Iam or I am uh, because he likes to say that he is I am because he's mm -hmm. trying to be God. Yeah. And so the, the, the girl who's Ma her name is Maddie V and then the cowboy character Nash, they're part of this infiltration team that go in to rescue Ben Franklin. And that's basically the story that you're in is that are trying to uh, spring him out of the prison of the uh, VR program that he has been kidnapped into. And there'll be lots of stuff, and I won't say the rest, but that's basically the setup of the story and where you kind of fall in in uh, issue one um, and how they're trying to figure out how they're going to rescue Ben Franklin from this really sinister world where everything's great and wonderful and there's no problems and no death and blah, 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 and it's all uh, smoke, and screen, uh, s smoke and mirrors to basically steal your soul. <laughs> Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing that that's that the yeah the perfect is is a lie. Yeah. Yeah. 
And, and Bang uh, Franklin is a smart cookie, so he very even though he's smart from NFL, cookie. That's the thing is some of these guys, you know, people like uh, imagine that we're the smartest right now. No, actually, uh, a lot of these guys were really, really brilliant. Well, some of us have we've 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 definitely been smart enough to like you know harness the power of the microchip, but we don't have wisdom. And right. our founding fathers had a lot of wisdom. And I think that where they were short-sighted was they trusted future generations too much with the liberty um, and, and freedom because, but, you know, it's like uh, what uh, John Adams said. He said that our, our system of government is only for a moral people. And so now we can kind of see why we're yep. having problems because... Um, yep. Social media has exposed us as not being necessarily a moral people. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's been, you know, that media, uh, movies and TV and everything yeah. so freaking immoral. Um, Paulus Arts has a good comment. Girl boss is when a chick overrides the male protagonist and emasculates them. Female characters are allowed to be good at stuff. I agree, Paulus Arts, and that's yep. why I have this heroine as one of the main characters, because she's not going to emasculate anyone. In fact, her story arc is going to really piss off feminists. Mm. Yeah. You know, another thing, too, is uh, much is forgiven with, with the, if the girl's really hot. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, oh, yeah, I kind of emasculated him, but boy, she is smoking. <laughs> <You know? laughs> she actually won't be. She's she she you'll 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 see you'll see. Yeah, I mean, you saw because you got to you got a sneak peek at issues uh, two and three, and you got right. to see that she's not as hard as she first appears to be. She's still yeah. all woman. Okay, let me, I'm going to flip this figure and this whole image. This is a real good trick. I don't, I, I'm sure you've done it too, right? When you flip it and you go, oh my gosh, it's way off or something. And Doesn't then all of a sudden you see, all your, you see all your mistakes instantly. Yeah. You know? And then, the, this is the great thing about Photoshop, is I can fix then, I can go back and, and alter the, um, the little mistakes. You know, and you can work, I can work at it. This way, usually when I'm you know drawing, I have to use the mirror and then try to fig try to almost remember. Okay, how what what did I have to you know what did, what was wrong yeah. as I went back and take a look. Now you can actually look at it, figure it out. You know, and uh, man, it's it's just so much nicer to do. So I will I will print this out and I I will do it in pencil. You know, draw it, then scan it back in, and color it. Let me get rid of these uh, where the. Uh, the GAC. Those, those, uh, they're just in the way. Hang on a second. Why is this thing so big, dude? I gotta make this screen smaller somehow. And what happened? I don't know what I did. Anyways. Anything else? Anybody else say anything? Well, while I'm trying to figure this out. We got. <laughs> Let's see. ID uh, Crisis Design says, first time watching, great stuff so far. Hail, hail ID Crisis Design. Um, Paulus Arts uh, says, flipping the canvas is my favorite aspect of working digitally. I uh, can see my mistakes in me. Exactly, dude. It's so, it, exactly. it's almost disheartening because yeah, you see them. So, you're like, what? Like, really? You're like, for me, especially like, heads like flipping a head like if i'm doing a head like a head like at a at a three-quarter view yeah and then i flip it and you're like whoa 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 and i'm like whoa, what was i whoa. on something or <laughs> yeah i can see this leg it needs to be bigger in proportion with the other one a little bit more so watching watching uh you really see how much of a painter you really are you know well, i'm you, traditional you draw yeah. like a painter you're sculpting you know you're like building up sculpting. tearing away building up tearing yep. away exactly it's yeah. it's t it's tr it's traditional art yep oops i'm on the wrong layer yeah it's the same it's the same way that i kind of like Darn. draw is like i just can't help it i'm i'm a painter at heart yeah 
And merge those layers. Um, I have ID Crisis asks, uh, what's the shortcut for flipping an image in Clip Studio? I have no idea, dude. Um, because I don't Photoshop. work in Clips. Yeah, this is Photoshop. I don't work in Clip Studio. I work in Photoshop as well. Um, I think Photoshop. I tried Clip Studio. I just couldn't get myself into it. Yeah, uh, Jimmy Arias uh, swears yeah. that he, he loves it. But the only thing is, I was wondering. I was going to ask him, does Clip Studio have the liquify tool? I don't know. I don't I really love, know much about it. It, it. it sounds like it doesn't use a lot of rem memory, and the, the liquify tool I think uses a lot of memory to do it. Yeah, Photoshop is not efficient. <laughs> it is not an efficient program for sure. Um, but I have found ways to make it efficient. Cause you I mean, mean with memory and stuff? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that you want to do is you definitely want to have an SSE drive, uh, SSD drive dedicated as a backup scratch disk for your Photoshop so that it can pull from there um, oh. completely empty. That'll oh, cause help. Because that, that's what, uh, what, what's, what, what kind of thing is that you say? Uh, a solid state drive, like an SSD external drive, like usually like a gig to two gigs, and you just leave that sucker empty, and then you hook it up. Uh, usually you want to get one, one of the faster ones. You hook it up, and then you set that as your backup scratch disk for Photoshop, that'll help um, with working on it. The yeah, because occasionally I'll get, a, I'll get a scratch disk full uh, yeah. message. Get an SSD drive, get like a gig or two, hook that thing up. Um, she looks like Fairchild from Gen 13. You know, <clears throat> Art of Roy, I, uh, I would probably agree because I loved Gen 13 when I was a kid and I love J. Scott Campbell and so you know how like when you love stuff when you're a kid and you like buy all the comics and you read all the comics, mm -hmm. um, Gen 13 and Danger Girl, I, I basically bought all those books. Uh, and so a lot of that probably is heavily influenced um, into my subconscious, is like, you know, nailed yeah. into my subconscious. Yeah, um, what it, what it, especially what's going on here is the, um, cow, the cow, we call it the cow. Mm -hmm. um, and then, then her her eyes, and that's sort of thing that she was very much like that. Look, that, that that was her, that was her look, you know. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, ID Crisis designed an external SSD drive, so you just plug that into your USB C, um, and you want to get a, the fast one though. You like want to get like a Samsung? I can't remember the speed. I, I'll have to look up uh, on my on my drive. Um, it's not ideal. You definitely want an internal, but like, to, you know, it, the, the, that's the easiest and fastest way. The other thing to do with Photoshop is at the end of your work day is to quit Photoshop, like yes. save everything, shut it down, quit, quit it. You don't necessarily have to restart your computer. Just quit Photoshop because Photoshop is very inefficient and, um, essentially like quitting it, like clears, like the quote unquote, the cash, you know, mm -hmm. um, so that you'll have more room to work the next day. So that's okay, what I so, do. Yeah, I, I, I do always quit before I yeah. before I shut down. Because a lot of people leave it running, and they'll be like, oh, why am I running out of... And it's like, Photoshop's just terribly inefficient. Hmm. But okay. I like it. I like it. It's, like, very powerful. Yeah, well, uh, Jimmy was saying the output of Clip Studio, though, is, like, really low. Uh, you know, you get... You, you get a high, high strong image with or high res image with low memory when, when he puts out you know high high definition or uh, yeah so that's an advantage for sure yep okay she's pretty much done for me as far as like the uh the figure the structure yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so now nash is taller obviously right yeah nash is taller so, and so is uh, Ben. Yes. So that's good. She, they'll frame her. And uh, let's see. Because I'm not going to draw too much longer here. But I uh, just wanted to do it. What's Jimmy saying? Oh, what is Oh, I forgot saying? to send me a link. Well, I didn't know I was. He didn't. I, I asked and he didn't say it was going. All right. I'm going to send it to Jimmy because I want to see Jimmy in here. He's always a bridesmaid. <laughs> no, he's not. Jimmy did a cover for Silence Do Good, and oh man, that thing looks awesome, and it's getting colored right now. Woo, I can't wait. Okay, let's see. I cannot wait. 
Let's see. Yeah, I was, I was thinking, oh, I'm not going to go much too much longer. Now Jimmy's in here. Oh, dude. See, see, I'm not that when I'm on. I'm not checking my DMs and my. Uh, it's well, when you're drawing, it's hard. I mean, it's like, dude, yes, I gotta draw. I, I, I gotta I'm drawing. Draw. I'm, I'm trying to look at the chat. I'm trying to do all this stuff. So actually, I really appreciate you being in there to help me out. It's like I gotta work on some key art right now, but I'm like, ah, oh, I'm having too much fun watching you draw. Yeah, the magic is happening. Ooh, <laughs> this is stupid. All right, it is see. magic. Don't you forget it. Yeah, it is. Actually, you know, when you think about... Uh, now, I know how I learned how to draw and all that stuff. I, I know the mechanics of it all. But still, there's something there when you're... You know, you're... Uh, where does that real creativity come from? And, you know, that, that just that feel that... that I don't know. It's, it's hard to describe. So, I think I have to flesh out Nash before I, before I do this... Uh, Pin it down here. Mm. Well, speaking of uh, painterly stuff, um, oh, wait, let me see if Jimmy's is Jimmy in here yet. No, I got to keep an eye out for Jimmy. So I got to move this around so I can see the screen when he pops in. So, Jimmy, you should have the link in uh, Twitter. I feel like such an old guy. Something like. And in the the Twitters, uh, in the Jim, Twitters, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, all the Twitter stuff. So. ID Crisis is asking. <laughs> oh wait, uh, oh, oh, Gray Wolf says I'm working on a a light lighted theater marquee, and it's a bit hard making it stand out in the frame. Ooh, yeah, a lighted uh, theater marquee. So are you illustrating that? Because that is a challenge, man, for sure. Um, ID Crisis Design says, hey, Jimmy. Procreate users. <laughs> Procreate is awesome, but it's very limited compared to Photoshop. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Procreate, uh, I would say it's more for like, you know, with your iPad, mobile devices. Yeah. But when it comes to publishing, you know, Clip Studio is designed for everything, the draw, the animation, multi-page layout. I mean, it's lettering, inking. It's incredible. Oh, really? You can letter in, pro pro uh, in uh, Clip, Clip Studio? Studio? Yeah, yeah, you can work either vector or, or raster in your layers. Wow. It's it's magic. It was created by fairies, man. I don't know how. They, <laughs> I don't know how they I did, did look at it. Uh, uh, can you? Uh, one question though: Do you can you use um, the liquify tool? Does it have a liquify type tool? Yeah, yeah, you it does. Liquify. Yeah, yeah, you got uh, you got uh, uh, you can got a warp tool. You can uh, you can. Uh, you know, uh, scale and, and warp stuff as well. It's, it's great, man. It's it's a really good program. It's got uh, uh, 3D assets for all you 3D asset illustrators out there. You know, guys. For, are... Yeah, for guys that want to get free 3D assets. and But then you can't yeah. run them through the Photoshop filters. Oh, yeah, well, there's filters. Uh, Clip Studio has filters, like, uh, like, for, like in Photoshop. And then pretend to draw. Yeah, yeah, you know. That's that's the way I'm gonna be doing it soon. I'm getting older, you know. Like, no, I'm trying to save my you're 3D not assets. Gonna... <laughs> None of it matters because AI is gonna replace us in a few years, guys. So ah, uh, I Don't actually worry. have uh, I have different take on that. After working with AI last year, all last year uh, in video games, oh. uh, AI is not impressive. I hope not. My my concern is that is that not that it's gonna be better, but it'll be good enough. It, yeah. Well, that that uh, yeah, it already yeah, is good you know enough. Like, yeah, look, it already is good enough. Exactly. I think I think what's going to end up being the thing that like guys like us really are going to need to do is get off of digital more and actually go back to traditional, um, because I think that's going to be the way that we can set ourselves apart. Because digital, you, you can always tell the difference between digital and traditional, right? Like we we all work in in, in digital and work traditional. Uh, and I think that'll be the, the thing that will set us apart is if we go back to being predominantly uh, traditional, I think it will help. But AI, dude, it's a, it's, it's, I don't know. There's a lot that's just so disappointing about it. it all, you, essentially, all it is is stealing, right? Yes. I mean, well, here's that. the thing is, I, I, I put the, a post up the other day. Someone sent them, sent them to me that you can now protect your art. You can poison your art for AI, which would be really interesting if... You know, it goes out there, and now they can't use it. Um, Interesting. They can't steal it. Uh, you know, and all, you know that that four finger things, or what? I mean, you know the uh, 
<laughs> I mean, the, the five finger thing and all that, that problem. If you could put into your art that, you know, that poison and now they can't, that would really be cool. You yeah, know, the Martin. irony in AI art is that when you use AR art, it creates your human character with five fingers, you know, and it's like it's uh, and, and then a thumb, but but five fingers discount you know what i mean it's also tied to <laughs> this word theft, you know yeah that's yeah, what you get if you're still you get, it's still the product yeah, yeah. five finger ai art but the the thing that's so frustrating about it is it it takes a it takes a lot of work oh i actually i think our, our artists right now like really good digital artists like you guys will still be faster than someone trying to get the AI to do the right thing uh, yeah, for one for a singular singular image. You lose the human creativity. Yeah. You know, the human mind is incredible. Um, you know, the things that we can imagine and think think up. Yeah, well, and, you just think how many decisions are being yeah. made all, every time I, you know, I'm, I'm drawing something just like just with this particular picture here. The difference between having this guy moved, you know, ha uh, three quarters of an inch to the left or the right is a decision mm -hmm. and, and and that makes a big difference with your with you know with, with the look of the piece it's just that now again I, i'm afraid that they're you know they'll be able to um it, you know make something good enough so but if you really want something worked out really thought through it's it, it takes human uh yeah. that human element to it so yep. it, it will, i don't think it'll ever be as quite as good but because yeah, like I've seen something lately. There, you see these pictures of these beautiful women created with AI, and they're kind of just unpleasant to look at. You can see it's perfect, but it's just ugh, just something about it. it's grotesque almost. You know, even though even though there's nothing wrong with it, it's perfect. soulless. Well, it's soulless. I mean, you really can see that there's no soul there. And I think that when we do create, and this is where I get all hippy dippy and stuff, but I think there's a part of us that ends up getting left behind in the art. And that's not happening with AI because there's nothing there yeah. to get left behind. It's kind of like people keep asking me, like, how did you land such a beautiful young wife? You know, and I go, well, the first day I met her, she's like, she's like, hey, so do you find me attractive? And I was like, you're perfect. Ugh, it's disgusting. Oh, wait, like AI is too perfect. And she was like, oh, that's an God. insult now. Perfect. And I, an built, I built, I built, I built some insecurity in her. Yeah, that's all I, did. <laughs> I broke her down. <laughs> Is that how you is that, is that how you do it nowadays? I didn't know yeah, that. Oh okay. man, hilarious! I break down their confidence, man. You know, you can't have confident, confident yeah, you're, woman. You're perfect. Oh, I'm not that. That's so insulting. That's what it's gonna be like. Like perfect. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Joe Juxtapose says I read an AI graphic novel. Each panel changed the character's appearance. It's a rough read. It's called Myth Wars. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like wow. AI is not consistent with like character models yet. I think it will get there, but at the same time, like everything's so stiff. Like every, when we were using AI to like do like animations for like these video games that I was working on, it was like I, I honestly I was getting really frustrated with the company because I was like, dude, we could actually do this faster if you just let us stop trying to use AI and try to make it a thing. I feel like AI is like if anyone's ever seen Mean Girls when that one girl's all like trying to say fetch and everyone else is like it's not going to happen stop yeah, trying to yeah. make fetch happen that's <laughs> AI I think there's a lot of corporations that are trying to make it happen because they yeah. see that oh we don't have to pay artists as much or this or that and it's like I don't know I, think I, it's I like how we're you. three dudes and instead of saying you know like stop calling soccer football you know it's not going to happen Americans are going to call it that instead we go with Mean Girls the movie that's our reference <laughs> Sorry, I can't help it. I uh, yeah. well, soccer is not my instinct because I don't see soccer as a legitimate sport. It's more of a situation on grass. <laughs> what? <laughs> I love. You know, I I love soccer, but I never played it as a kid. You know, we just. I'm from that generation. We didn't have a soccer ball. We just. It was just yeah. baseball, football, uh, hockey, um, basketball. That was it, man. And there was just wasn't, and I, but I wish he had. It just wasn't. It just wasn't in the culture. Yeah. Now it is. It's a great sport though, because man, you, you and for, for young people to get cardiovascular well, working out and all that stuff. It's fantastic. I, I'm in Texas, and there's a huge Spanish, um, well, more Mexican um, culture here. So soccer is huge. Yeah. But, but so is football. Football is huge yeah. in Texas. So I grew up with both. Yeah. Soccer is like the poor man's version of hockey. 
you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like, very true. It's, it is. It's why you see it's it like in, the, hockey in the, for, It's hockey for peasants. It's, it's why you see it in the third world countries. <laughs> it's seriously. hockey for the tropics. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, that's true. That's the nice way of putting it, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> Try not to hurt anyone's feelings. You know? Oh, I don't care. I'm a jerk. <laughs> I mean, they, they call me salty for a reason, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you got to live up to that. I mean, that's, exactly. yeah, you, they said you got the bar set there. So I, I like this. I like how you block out your figures, uh, and then you start yeah. to find them in and looks a little more. And yeah, this is this is something that I think it's good for younger artists to see because I, I see a lot of new artists try to go straight into the finished piece. Mm -hmm. You know, straight into a refined piece, but it's like you, you know. Whom I think Salty mentioned earlier, you draw like you're sculpting, you know. And, mm -hmm. Yes, and that's the way you do it. I mean, it's, yep. yep, it's traditional. And the the thing is, too, you got to get the, the underscore or the under uh, drawing. It's such, it's the heart, it's the power. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. if you don't have that, then you're you're skipping. I, actually, I find it frustrating when I see people drawing like, and it's like you're missing. The, and I can see the, the, the what they're missing out on, like. Yeah, go for it. Get that. Get that power. Get really loose with your lines. I mean, just go. Yep. You know, go in there. Go. Go nuts. You know, do that stuff, and just do it fast. Do. Yep. You know, I used to do gesture drawings. I would do you know hundreds of them, and just and just to like I got a feel for it. So it, it's just a matter of of practicing. Yeah. It's like people say, oh, you can you you can uh, draw. It's really it's, it's so natural to you. Uh, try drawing a, a thousand, and then see if it don't you don't know, say the same and thing. Do it you know? fast. Yes. And yeah. and watch watch what happens. Draw small, do a bunch of figures. Don't you know? Uh, we used to do. What, I mean, I really started with gesture drawings back in high school, art school. I had a good art, good art teacher in, in high school, and the person would get up there. You know, we'd have a person model or just maybe a student or something, and they just do a pose. And you had like thirty seconds or a minute or something to, mm -hmm. to sketch wow. out that pose. Then they switch right away to another pose. And you just you just throw that piece of paper away. It's you, there's throwaway stuff. These are just it's warm up sketches. What's his pants look like? Let's see. Sorry Man, about that's, that. That's awesome. <laughs> like, I mean, I wish I grew up drawing. I I didn't I didn't draw. I didn't even know I could draw until I was about 18 years old. And I was you know I got into comics and comics is what made me want to learn to draw. And, and I wish I had been traditionally trained and all that, but. I do it now. Now I, you know, I try to, to really learn as much as hey, I can. Dude, and bro, the co cover you did for Silence Duga looks so good, man. It looks so good. My, my wife saw it, you know, because, um, you know, she does all the all the payments for everything, and she's like, "Oh my!" She came into the office. She's like, "Holy crap, that thing looks so good." I was like, <laughs> "I know." And my reference, Thanks. I can't see what his boots are. Does he have boots? So his pants uh, go over his boots, okay, like a cowboy, to... like a traditional cowboy. Alrighty. So, Salty, did you say the did the colors ever get a hold of you? Yeah, he's working mm -hmm. on the colors now. I sent him um, reference for the color for the color oh, palette, um, and he started on it. I think yesterday. Yeah, so he's really good. That. He's a good good young man. His work is is really good. I had Andrew Dollhouse. Andrew Dollhouse was my my personal colorist, but then uh, Andrew's doing his own creator own book now. He's going to do a crowdfunded book, so he's super busy. And I was like, oh, man, there's nobody else that I'd want coloring me. And then I found this kid, and uh, he just sent me fan art. He just colored it. And I was like, holy crap, where, did, where have you been hiding, man? Nice. Yeah, yeah I'm thinking really about for um, book two. So book one is three issues because the issues are the floppies, and then the trade is going to be three issues, and it's going to be about 75 pages. And then for book two, I'm thinking about hiring him for the colors for the pages just so we can speed up production. Because yeah. I'm doing all the colors right now. Yeah, I, I hired him um, for a big, a bigger. I have a cover from a, a friend of mine. He's, a, he's real huge on YouTube. He's got 23 million subs on YouTube. He's huge on YouTube, and he's an artist. And he hasn't really been doing much art, but he, he, he said, uh, you know, he asked me, can I can I do a cover for Dragon Rage? And I was like, yeah, man. So he just donated a cover. And I was trying to find wow. the best colors I could find, man. And this this young man, um, you know, he's real polite and everything. But wait, uh, wait, the best colors you can find? You just found them right here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I meant for the style, <laughs> for the style that my friend does. And um, uh, I found this young. Okay, backtrack now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I found this young kid. Yes, and, if only I knew a colorist 
Somebody, yeah. anybody. I, you color. I keep thinking of you as a painter. Like I, I rarely ever. Well, I, it is true. I'm not the best colors for everything. I, it has to be the right. It's like just even the characters and drawing. My yeah. style isn't always the best style for every character. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not. You know, it, you have to pick the right, per, the right artist for the job, basically. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's, so, that's so true. Man, I love the pose on uh, on the uh, cowboy. Yeah, it's good. Dual wielding those. Uh, oh, do you have the finger on the frame? God bless you, sir. Huh? It looks what? like you have the finger on the frame and not the trigger. On the slide? Yeah. Oh, no, it's a revolver he uses, isn't it? Not a, not a slide. Oh, wait. Not a it looked like it. Finger, yeah, on the finger on the frame. Yeah, don't you shoot guns? Don't you know gun safety? Gun really. safety, yeah, when you have to get your... Uh, Never touch carry. the trigger until you're ready to destroy whatever's in front Isn't he ready to yeah. destroy everything? <laughs> Yeah, that's the one thing they when I had to go get my well back in the before it was yeah. open carry in Texas it was concealed carry and that was the thing, you don't put your finger yeah. on that trigger. Get until, the booger hook off the bang switch. Yeah, that's the one thing they'll tell you when you're there. And then you got to clear, you got to clear the chamber. Yeah. Before you can, you know, before you can put the gun down. Yeah. You got to clear the chamber before you go on any date. Like in, uh, yeah. Kind of... <laughs> hey, you know that's not bad advice. Even if you are a, a well, Christ-fearing man, that's not a bad advice. Sometimes when you practice, they prefer you shooting you know? blanks. You know. Sometimes no, you never want to go into a there. date. You want to go into a date with a clear mind, not full of uh, th yeah. th thinking with the right head. And the one one way you think with the right head is uh, make sure you clear out the other head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> remember, so, remember so, you something go. about Mary, or what was it? Something, yeah. about, something about Mary. Something oh about my Mary. gosh, yeah. that's got to be the one of the funniest. Yeah. So, Dan, I want you to, uh, when you get a chance, you should check out my live stream on inking um, uh, that I just did because okay. I'm, you're, dude, I'm, I can't, like, I've been watching your videos and I've been learning a ton from you. Mm -hmm. But one thing, dude, I, I learned this method at Disney and it'll blow your mind because it'll okay. base it, it fits right in with what you're doing. Okay. So, what I do is I fill a layer with black or blue or whatever I'm using as my base for pencils. Uh huh. I mask that, I, I create a mask, and then I fill that mask. Okay. And then I draw on the mask so that when I'm drawing and erasing, I just hit X to switch the colors. Instead of having to go to brush to erase, back to brush to erase, I right, just right. hit X and switch back and switch back and forth between revealing the mask and painting out the mask. Ah, it's basically okay. what you're doing, yeah, yeah. but it's like, it, it's a time saver because all you do is hit X, boop, boop, and then you're like, X, erase, X, draw, X, erase, X, right, draw. Right, right. I don't mind it too much because uh, the time when that happens gives me a little time to think. A little, oh, perhaps. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it doesn't matter. I mean, I, I, it may be something I could do, use, you know, but I'm, I'm not too worried about that time. But the, uh, um, but the, the, uh, the, that's actually a good, I'm going to try it. I'm definitely going to try it. Because yeah, it's see like, yeah, like it. watching you, it's like, yeah, this is exactly, it's like build up, tear away, build up, tear away, which is like the way that I love to draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does he have a, a belt of bullets and stuff or anything? Or? So he's got um, a belt that he has. I see his, the belt. Yeah, okay. yeah, his gun on his left hip, and then he's got a gun on the left side of his chest because he does a little bit of a Doc Holiday fr uh, from uh, Tombstone, Val Kilmer's oh, character. That is. Um, that's how he dual wields. Because then on his right hip, he's got uh, a laser version of Mare's leg from... Uh, wanted dead or alive <laughs> if anyone remembers that yeah okay so he's got actually he's got a um a vest i think so. uh, a, a shoulder harness in over here yeah shoulder harness with some big big uh laser bullets i like your style i like the way you, your face is the high cheekbone the roman jaw I like the features are great yep again yeah very yeah. traditional yeah the roman jaw i just look in the mirror you know <laughs> yeah, real chiseled. Like, let's, let's I look, look in the mirror and I can, fall in love with myself all the Exactly. Over I stare at myself all day long. I got a mirror by me, you know. Just, you know, just, uh, you know, got this, just to look good. <laughs> How you look? You the look old good. Mark Silvestri. Paulus <laughs> Arts has great advice. Don't be horny before the date or you'll trick yourself into liking the girl. That is fact. <laughs> Like her for who she is, not wh how attracted you are to her because you haven't cleared the pipes. Yeah, it's it's funny because the, the guys have their, we have our rule and then girls have their rule. Girls are like, eat before you go, don't be hungry for the date. 
yeah. you don't want him to know how much of a pig you are. And, <laughs> and guys are like, clear the chamber because you don't want to know what kind of pig you are. Exactly. <laughs> so we're just basically trying to hide each other's pigness from each well, other. Well, you yeah. know, I mean. <laughs> and that works. No, you're just trying to, you know, get the extra out of the way so you can get to know the person. It, well, this is yeah. actually it does make sense. Yeah. yeah. It's, not, it's frowned upon by uh, certain religious people, though. The Catholic Church and stuff. <laughs> All right, let's see. I'm, I got. I created a mask now. Oh, gotta be careful. This, you know, this is. A, you know, I do this all the time. It's a danger area, where. Oh, <laughs> look where her hand is. You know, it's yeah. like I gotta make sure it's not on his <laughs> crotch. Yes. Now it looks like it's kind of missing a little bit, which is good. You know. Well, I drew Ben Franklin with his gun, his arm down, and the gun was hanging in right between the cowboy's legs. <laughs> and I was drawing it live, and somebody in the chat goes, "Oh, like what you did with the gun? It looks like his dong." And I went, "What? Oh!" <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had to move Hilarious. both position of the arm. Yeah, you, you know? it's so. I mean, you don't mean to. It's just that when you're positioning these figures, you you just yeah. you know it's they're especially this they're crisscrossing. That's gonna probably happen. You gotta you just gotta keep an eye on it for so. I mean, or unless you wanted to do it as a joke, it's funny too. But uh, it, like it's like inevitable. He doesn't use that stuff. He doesn't care. Yeah, I remember one. It was a it was a GI um, Captain America, and uh, it, it was just so painfully obvious, and obvious that they didn't mean it. But man, it was it was spot on. This this the Howling Commandos were running and and. And there was a, a totally, a, it was completely, um, you know, in the wrong place, the skun. This guy mm. had. <laughs> Paulus Hart says, uh, I banged a chick on our second and third date. <laughs> I stopped talking to her because I realized I don't like her. I felt bad, but I learned to listen. <laughs> my, my wife grew up, um, she grew up very, in a religious family, almost like a cult, you know, and so she was waiting for marriage. So she was oh, wow. 22, a virgin, when I met her. And uh, she tells everybody, she's so open and honest to everybody. She tells everybody, I almost made it to marriage, but I made it to the husband. That counts for something. <laughs> it makes me sound like I just kept nagging and begging, please, please, will you sleep with, please, can we do it now? Are we going to do it? Come on. It's so hard, man. Literally, it's so hard. <laughs> I wore her down. I'm like, please. <laughs> it's the night before the wedding. It, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Well, I decided to marry my my wife after five months of dating. So, because I just oh, was like, I yeah. just let's just get. I mean, we were older. We were in our thirties, and we knew each other from high school. So it was like, ah, you know, let's just do yeah. it. Yeah, if you know, you know. Did, did you do the yeah. proposal like 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 I did? What I did was I took my wife to a beautiful romantic spot. You know, the sunken gardens. It's, it's got all this foliage. It's beautiful. There were people there. They were watching. I got down on one knee. I took out the ring that I've been saving up for. And I, I, get, I take out the ring, I present it to her, and I go, you win. And I just <laughs> Wow, that, that, oh, that, that, that's one of everybody. No, I didn't do that. I didn't do any, uh, all that. We were going for a walk in the park that uh, I lived across the street from. And uh, I just told her to hold out her hand. And then oh. I uh, dropped the ring in her hand. She thought you were going to whip her. it out right there. And <laughs> kinky devil and said and then i didn't need to say anything she already knew she's like really and i'm all yeah <laughs> like You're like uh yeah i can't return this thing uh <laughs> no i actually had the ring made oh it's like ours made, yeah dude. she had we had ours custom made and um so it was as long as it's not made by sauron yeah <laughs> they're, they're, they're okay <laughs> One gotta be make sure what you you know who's making that ring. You know, it's like uh, they're gonna have they're gonna have something to control you and control the you know. Well, take it over is you. one ring to rule me the rest of my life. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> as long as she makes you sandwiches. Yeah, it actually stuff. is yeah. the same yeah. sort of effect of that ring, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it is. You know, it's, but I'm I'm glad. I mean, I, same thing. Like I was already um, I, I was 42, I think, at the time. And uh, Anna was. You know, oh wow! You waited in, a while. In early twenties. No, I mean I've I've been married seven times. No, you haven't. <laughs> what are you? I've married years? a lot. I've are you serious? Lot. Seven yeah, times or like? No, no, I'm on my third marriage. Now. Okay, but I joke yeah. and say it's seven because it feels like it. You 
Man, I don't want to know what your um, alimony bill is like. Good lord. No, luckily in Texas, see, in Texas you can just swap out wives. Like you don't pay alimony. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. As long as you don't knock them up, you're fine. You know. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. No, Marriage yeah. Marriage is tricky, through. dude. Marriage is tricky. It is. It is. At this point, she's lucky because I've lost all my fight. You know, I'm like. Mm. <sighs> they wear you down. You know. Yeah. yeah, the other two wives beat me down. They you can't just... even do rope a dope. You just think. Like... I mean, that's what it is at this point. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I definitely would say like I'm very pro marriage, but for a lot of younger guys, I'm all modern women. Mm. Oh man, yeah, mm, mm, mm. Mm, yeah. And don't I don't get married. You know what though? You got almost. You got to go to a, like a church or something where someone's got some sort of. Well, it's not even that because the, the Christian girls are just as bad because they're print. They've been told their whole lives yeah. from their daddy that they're princesses and oh, they can yeah. do no wrong. So they're yeah. little friggin' brats, man. And they're like fours and fives, and they think that they can get a 10. And you're like, dude, you just passed up a guy that's a seven and a plumber. And you're like, oh, man. That's oh, I know. See, that's in yeah, And, and I, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of girls that are older that are kicking yeah. themselves because the, the guys they passed up when they were younger that were pretty good, you know. Yeah. And they yeah. just said, oh, no, I don't feel the magic, you know. Yeah, just mm-hmm. because you decided that you were going to go sleep with the one guy that told you that he loved you and you were attracted to, and then he left you after he The one guy that forgot him. to clear the barrel, forgot yeah. to clear the chamber. <laughs> Didn't you know. care um, about it, yeah. But, you know, I, I got lucky. I mean, Anna is, uh, she's a millennial, and she's young, but her father um, is much, much older than her mother, and he raised her to be a wife. Like, he, wow, you know, gave her all the qualities and taught her, you know, to someday, you know, you're going to, you're going to, you know. I don't want to say serve your husband, but that's kind of what. So she's like the bionic woman. She was like, well, she was created to. She she's like she that separate wife. Like have you guys seen to be a wife. Have you guys seen watch the on the Kings? Oh, you've been there with me, Dan. You're with me. You've seen it where I'm the only one on the Kings that his wife is coming with a full dinner plate and Ooh. serving me almost every. Yeah, I gotta, night. I've got to get my yeah. wife going on that. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Slacking. That's right, baby. You know. That's how it's supposed hey, to be. Hey, Jimmy's wife has got a, got dinner coming to him. Yeah, Why do I want to get back in booty shorts and serving to him in booty shorts? Yeah, man. what the heck? That's right, man. I just That's how it should be. <laughs> well, I'd get yeah. that dinner. It'd be on top of my yeah, head. And, and people, people always tell me, like, man, either you're rich or super great in bed. I'm like, I, I don't know how. I just got lucky, you know? Oh, I think it's your super great bed, I'm sure, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Latin love. But, yeah, exactly. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> if, they, if they suggest that, you've got to just roll that. Yeah, 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 totally. Be like that. Yeah, sure. Uh huh. Exactly. That's what I. Would That's do. why she calls me Mario. She's I'm a plumber lame pipe. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Okay, let's see. Uh, well, I, I gotta get running. Speaking of the wife, I gotta go pick her up. So uh, I gotta run and go. Yeah, actually, I'm, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna end this anyways because um, I don't want to, I don't want to go into it. Graybeards is going, and I don't want to, I didn't want to go with too into their show. So oh, forget about everybody, go uh, check out Graybeards, and uh, that's a great show. I don't know. They're doing Atari, I think, tonight. Oh, so because uh, they had to do because everybody knows Aaron hates Atari, like so with passion. They got to do the greatest Atari <laughs> game ever. So when you know, they had the selection, they ever. I'm sure they. They're, I I selected Atari. I want to see him draw something Atari. I don't yeah. know why he hates Atari so much. That was Jose Luis Garcia Lopez's artwork on that, and I bought all those all those issues because of that because he's such a great artist. I think he's one of the greatest comic artists ever. And boy, boy can he draw. It's Arter just... Roy says I gotta go because daycare is letting out. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, she's half my age, man. I because people keep asking me like, hey, when did you meet her? And where where did you meet your wife? And I go, oh, I still remember that day, first time I saw her on that swing set. <laughs> <laughs> she hates that joke. Oh man, because it's, it's gross. Jamie, it's stuff. gross. You know, my my future wife hasn't been born yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I was nineteen when my wife was born. Oh, that's wow. Well, but I mean, you know, it's okay now. But if it works, it works. You know, yeah. as long as you weren't like trying to hit her up when she was twelve or sixteen. Yeah. Or, exactly. You you weren't messaging wow. her when she was seventeen. Oh so. no. Oh no. And grooming yeah. her. No, yeah. but. Uh, you know, no, but even when she was 22, even for me, it was weird. Like, I, oh, we, we I were just imagine. friends. Like, she would talk with me, and it took me about a year to finally, <laughs> right, right, <laughs> to, for us to start really start even considering dating. I, I would have never even imagined it, you know, back then. But 
I don't know how other guys do it, man. I heard these guys like Henry Cavill dating a 19 year old and he's in his late thirties. I just, you know, I would hate not that they don't know the references. Like all the things I say to, to my wife, like, Oh, yeah. Ferris Bueller or something like the, the, You know, you say it to a young person, like they'd be like, Ferris who, you know? Yeah. And I'm just like, Oh, forget it. You know, yeah. or Brady bunch or something. You know? I dated a 19 year old when I was 29 and I'll just say it was an experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, thanks, Dan. I appreciate it, man. I'm gonna get running. Okay, I'm gonna uh, just I'll end this. You those you guys, I'll just I'll talk to y'all later. Thanks everyone for showing up in the chat. Really appreciate it. Yeah, man. I uh, look forward to this. Thanks uh, for having I'm gonna me. do. We'll, we'll just we'll do more of this. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll I don't know if I'll work on this tonight, but uh, it could actually come on tonight. It depends on what's going on tonight, but um, you know, work more on this uh, cover. Can people see it happen live from start to finish? So, it'd be kind of cool, huh? Very cool. All right, guys. Thanks, and we'll or just well. Jimmy's gone. But he, t he, I bored him. I bored him. <laughs> <laughs> it's not unusual for me to put people to sleep. So, so yeah, I did, actually, I you know, I am Bob Ross. Apparently, uh, John, do you know that? So yes. that's that's I've been declared. So I've had my. I would my, agree. I, would I have agree. my wig. I'm all set. I'm ready to go. So, time. <laughs> it looks so stupid, but it's funny. I think it's awesome. All right, I'm going to end this. Uh, you, you can stand for a second if you want. Uh, but um, everyone else, we'll see you all later. And thank you all for, for showing up. Bye. Yeah, man. Thank you.